Dr. Elizabeth Yerf is co-founder and chief medical officer of Boulder Longevity Institute. Along with her 30 years as a practicing orthopedist specializing in sports medicine, Dr. Yerth has made it her mission to share the latest scientific research on how to truly heal the body at the cellular level. And with that, let me start the interview. Dr. Yerth, you are the co-founder and chief medical officer at Boulder Longevity Institute. Thank you so much for coming on our channel and welcome to Modern Health Plan. Well, thank you for having me. It's great. Yeah, it's great for you to come. So, Dr. Yerth, you founded uh, Boulder Longevity Institute. I'd kind of be interested to understand like, why you founded that and, and kind of what your background was coming into that, because it, I think the way it looks at uh, health and longevity is different from most other practices. So I, I did get into this in kind of a roundabout way because my background is orthopedics and orthopedics is about as far cry from sort of whole focused medicine, I think, as, as it comes, you know, we're, we're sort of trained to somebody has an injury, we fix the injury, you send them on their way. And I've been doing that for a long, long time. And sort of now about 18 years ago, started getting a little bit frustrated because what would happen is you have these people you know, sure, if you're young and you break your leg, it's going to get better and you'll be fine. But we, you have these people who just would come in and, you know, they'd hurt their shoulder and you'd sort of get it a little bit better, but not really. And, you know, and then they'd come in and it'd be a little worse and their knee would go. And, you know, I'm like, kind of, there's got to be a better way to keep these people together because it seems like, you know, as we age, every joint just keeps falling apart, right? And, you know, and just like the rest of us, that sort of process gets accepted as part of life. You know, you're just, you're just getting old and that's what happens. Your joints wear out. And so I started looking at, is there probably a better way of looking at this? Is there a better way of keeping people healthy? So their joints don't wear out. And so that when they have joint problems that they could actually get hundred percent better. And I started looking at arthritis as more of a, not a wear and tear related disease, but an inflammatory disease, which it is. So I came about it from a pretty roundabout way, but in so doing, I kind of started learning, okay, you've really just got to focus on the underlying person who holds all those joints and get them better and the joints will follow. So, the, so 18, 17 years ago, I went back and retrained in functional medicine to American, American Academy of Functional Medicine. And we opened Boulder Longevity Institute. And I sort of wore two hats. I had my orthopedic practice all day. I'd come here by night and see patients who I really thought I was actually getting better. And, and, you know, so it was a little bit of a dichotomy in that, you know, you, you'd have 15 minutes with your patients to, to talk about a knee. I'm not going to be able to go into their overall health, their diet, their hormones, everything like that. So it was, it was a little frustrating. And then really only a few years ago, decided to bring all of the orthopedics into this practice, which was functional medicine, regenerative medicine, health focused medicine. And, and I will tell you that that is even transition that I will say that even the, sort of functional medicine crowd who are sort of considered the, you know, the, the future of medicine, I think they're starting to get a little behind. And so a few years ago, um, working with a doctor, Bill Seeds, who is, you know, much more into what's called cellular medicine, we started focusing a little bit more on, okay, it's not really just functional, it's the cell, if you have to get the cells healthy. We actually started practicing what's called cellular medicine. How do we actually get your cells, each and every cell working optimally? Because every one of your cells working optimally means your brain's going to work better, your hearts are going to work better, you're going to work better, and your joints aren't going to fail. So our practice has now transitioned more into what we call cellular medicine, which is really pretty technical. It's trying to look at all the metabolic pathways that make you tick and make sure that that cell, each and every cell in your body is actually working optimally. And so there's not a lot of doctors doing this at this point. And we're trying to train people. We have a scientific research and performance institute that we're trying to train doctors more into cellular medicine. But it's, it's, I think, going to be where we have to start looking is, you know, at the mitochondria, at cellular health, because that's really what's going to kind of get everybody better. Interesting. So if so, do you look at kind of healthy people. So if I was like a healthy person, could I come into your clinic and I say, well, you know, how can you, I guess, improve my health? How, how can you improve my longevity? And if I, if I did, then what is it you would look at, at in me to try and decide, 
you know, where the things are that you can improve? So we do, you know, I, I would say that my favorite patients are those healthy people who just want to live forever and be at their optimum, you know, be at the top of their game to be, you know, being competing with the 20 year old still and, and feeling sharp and on their game. Those are sort of my favorite patients to work with. And that, I would say what typically drives people oftentimes into a practice where you're, you know, you're spending more money and more time and more energy. A lot of times as you start realizing you're starting to fade, right? You start, or you have an illness that's not getting better or an injury that's not getting better. Unfortunately, you know, I would love to say everybody comes to us in great health, just wanting to be better. But I would say what the big driver oftentimes for all of us is, is realizing maybe our health is not as good and we want to, you know, start to treat things. We get, we have everything from very, very sick people, uh, you know, people with post-viral syndromes after COVID, things like that. You know, people who have, have a whole bunch of cognitive stuff to people who are really top of their game, healthy, super athletes who want to be even better. And the workup honestly becomes a little bit similar. Obviously, when you're trying to track down a disease state, sometimes it's a little more complicated. But if you came in as you, know, as you who's this healthy person who says, okay, yeah, I, I'm healthy, but I'm obviously getting older and I don't want to get older, where do we start? And if you look at at where we have to start, it's kind of replacing, it's, it's looking at all those systems that we talked about to make sure that they're all functioning correctly. So we start with a host of labs. We have to look at the cardiovascular function where, and not just looking at your lipids. Your typical doctor is going to look at a total cholesterol and an HDL and LDL go, oh, your cholesterol is too high. We're going to put you on a statin drug. Not the right decision. Basically, high cholesterol means nothing. So you've got to look beyond that. You've got to look at, at you know, the triglycerides, the ratio of triglycerides to, to other things, looking at, at the size of the particles that make up the cholesterol, but a lot looking at inflammatory markers that will tell you that the heart and the vascular system is not working well. We can look at something called uh, PLAC, which looks at for enzymes that are starting to get to disrupt the membrane of the cell or the vascular structure, myeloproxidase, which is an enzyme that your macrophages produce when there's inflammation in your blood vessel, you'll see a rise in myeloproxidase. And we can say, mm, there's inflammation in your blood vessel is not a good thing. That's the first step to heart disease. So we look at a little deeper. We look at making sure that metabolic control is to a T, meaning that your insulin levels are nice and low, that your hemoglobin A1C, which is a marker of glucose over time, is in a very strict range. You know, we will sometimes use continuous glucose monitors on people to make sure that we're keeping their glucose in a super tight space. So you can, you know, basically put a little thing on your arm like this that you can measure with your phone, tell you what your glucose is at times. But when I have patients sometimes who, who, who think they're super healthy and their glucose levels look okay, but I look at their insulin levels and they're, they're a little on the high side, I often put a continuous glucose monitor on and see what's, what is spiking their glucose. Because if your glucose is doing this all day long, it's a bad thing. So we can pristinely get you down to a perfect, you know, what what is the right diet for you? What is the right exercise for you to try and keep that glucose in range? And then we have to look at the other things that start. So that's the cardiovascular, cardiometabolic system, I'll say, right? It's your heart, your blood vessels, uh, your glucose control, which are all paramount to aging well. But then you have to look at hormones because as we age and really starting about 20, so much younger than people think, we start losing some hormonal function. And, you know, I, now we're seeing, you know, young men in their 20s with really low hormone levels, really low testosterone levels. We're seeing women who have been on birth control pills, so young girls on birth control pills who have no testosterone, who have sky high estrogens. Uh, so there's a lot of disruption in hormones starting at a young age. But obviously, as you get to be my age, that becomes much more significant. Mm -hmm. And for me to tell you to go, you know, a, a, as a man with no testosterone or a woman who has no testosterone or no progesterone, and I'm going to start preaching to you to go to the gym and exercise and eat a healthy diet and sleep well, it's kind of impossible if you don't have the hormones, right? If, I, if I'm a woman and I can't sleep because I have no progesterone and sleep is so critical health and well-being, how, how am I ever going to get you healthy unless I replace those hormones? 
So those people who are not advocating hormone replacement, and they're just saying, well, you just need to sleep better and exercise more and eat right. It's impossible to do that if you don't have the tools in place to do that. So if you're a man and your average guy starts losing testosterone in their 30s, then, you, you know, and I say, you got to build muscle, you got to go to the gym. How are you going to build muscle if your testosterone levels are low? How are you not going to feel anxious and irritable? Sleep is also very dependent on testosterone levels. So we always, you know, when, when I'm looking at, at preaching to people about diet and exercise, for me to expect them to fall through on that when they don't have any of the things their body needs to fall through on that is asinine on my part. I need to fix those things first. So you have to know what every hormone is, what every hormone's doing, um, and thyroid. So you have to look at all those things and uh, your adrenal function, all those pieces come to play if I'm going to ask you to eat right and exercise right and sleep right, which we know are the biggest tools, right? To, to helping aging. So we'll look at all that. Um, then the last test that, that, and this falls into that cellular medicine capacity. So we used to not really be able to look very carefully at the cell. You could do some things about the cell, but Dr. Dane Good now, who's a researcher, the biochemist who uh, has been researching a lot with what are called plasmalogens. Plasmalogens are part of the lipids that make up all of your nerves, all of your myelin. Your brain is made up of plasmalogens. Your heart is made up of plasmalogens. So plasmalogen function is key to some of the cell ability to do its jobs and to transmit impulses from one, me one message from a neuron to another. So he has developed what's called a metabolomic test. Mm -hmm. When all these people are saying, oh, let's look at genetics right? Everything mm -hmm. starts with genetics, but genetics don't mean much. I can have horrible genes and be well. Why is that? Because that some genes are expressed, some aren't depending on what I'm doing, my lifestyle. So, so that's what's called epigenetics. And then people started saying, okay, how can we look at epigenetics? And they started looking at proteins. So you could look at proteins and there's a whole field called proteomics. So we will sometimes do a test of proteomics on people to look at, at their health. But the next step is every one of those proteins has to get metabolized. And that's what's called metabolomics. So the final sort of step at looking at health is how everything in your body is metabolizing. So he's actually developed a test. It's a metabolomic test that allows us to look at mitochondrial health, uh, peroxisomal health, memory peroxisomes are one of the keys to, to lipid metabolism. So we can look at peroxisomal health, mitochondrial health. We can look at the cell membrane. We can look at what's called methyl transferase systems. So we can look into a cellular level at somebody now and say, okay, everything comes down to your mitochondria are a mess. So let's start there. How do we fix your mitochondria so everything falls into place? So I think that makes us kind of unique. There's not very many people doing this test. It's a very mm -hmm. cool test it's called prodrome scan. And that's one of the things we've added to the practice. It's actually really new. It keeps developing. Dr. Goodnow, it's amazing. And he keeps developing more. About that. So those are all, you know, it, it, you got to look at the basics, cardiometabolic, hormone, thyroid, and then get a little deeper dive down at the cellular level. Most of us won't do that all at once. It's a little overwhelming, right? So I'll start with, okay, let's get your hormones in order. Let's make sure that your glucose isn't sky high and your insulin's not sky high. Let's get those basics down, right? Let's get you eating healthy. Let's get you exercising. And then next step, now you want to be superhuman. I'm going to look down all the way to your cells and make your mitochondria function better. So that you remember mitochondria are energy, right? So brain, heart, muscles take a lot of healthy mitochondria. So now I can actually look at a mitochondrial level at you who wants to be superhuman and give you healthier mitochondria so you are, you know, can run faster and longer and live better. 